life happens. Um, but sometimes we just don't deal with it as best as we'd like, and that's the reality of it. Ba -da -da -da. Ba -da -ba -ba. Hello fellow citizens of YouTube who watch Potato Wisdom on the regular but haven't watched in the last six months because I have failed to upload. And I apologize for any inconvenience I may have caused. It's not like I just decided I'm just gonna never gonna upload up YouTube again. I'm just done. <laughs> Anytime I've ever been away from YouTube for an extended period of time, it's never been planned. It just happens and I always feel so bad for it. I feel bad. Where have I been and what have I been up to? That's what we're gonna cover today. I had a lot of plans for 2021. I have plans on doing a podcast because I've been wanting to do, start a podcast since before podcasts were a thing. I used to do my own little radio show that no one listened to, but it was on my little Fisher Price recording machine when I was a kid. And you know, I kind of want to do a radio show. Well, without the music, but a podcast. <laughs> uh, I wanted to do more, I wanted to do more coaching and courses for the potato reset. And finally, I wanted to write my second book. Yes, just an extension of the potato reset, incorporating fruit, which is what I call fruits and roots. So that didn't happen. 2021 had other plans for me. And uh, I had a rough time the last six months of the year. My youngest dog, she started getting really, really sick. We didn't know what was going on with her. She just, she started getting lethargic, not interested in her food, especially in the mornings. And um, just having like tremors, not, not seizures, but just like shaking, like she's cold or nervous. And um, she would pace around at night and just go stand in a corner. This is not a normal spot for Ellie to sleep, but I think she wanted some quiet. So she came in here and I put a pillow under her head. Yeah, poor baby girl. This all happened really, really fast. We took her to the vet. They did some blood work on her and they told us that she's not looking good. It looked like her kidney was shutting down, her liver was shutting down, um, like everything. She just looked like she was dying. And uh, we got her into emergency. Uh, we had a driver about two hours away in traffic to get her there. And I don't know that she would have made it if we hadn't have got her there <laughs> when we did. And just that whole experience, checking into the emergency clinic and them asking us if things go wrong, do you want us to resuscitate or not? That was just a devastating question to be asked. But I'm like, yes, resuscitate. I mean, she's two, she's a baby. But I still handle it like a champ. I was like in mama bear mode, um, thinking positive thoughts for her and just, you know, sending her all the, the good vibes, <laughs> juju, whatever. So I'm having a moment of just feeling uplifted and hopeful and I wanted to keep that vibration going. I've been on this roller coaster of emotions in the last few days, you know, going from feeling despair and grief and worried and sick for Ellie to, you know, feeling a little more calm and just, you know, in a more positive or uplifted vibration, thinking about her coming home and, you know, all that stuff. So I want to keep that going. And I got a really simple task for you if you're game. It's learning the lyrics of a song that I sing Ellie all the time. So it's a song I made out of one of her nicknames. One of her nicknames is Baby Bear, which is going to be upgraded when she turns two. She's going to be upgraded to Little Bear. But she looks like, I've always thought she looked like a little mini polar bear. Like a polar bear baby with black markings. <laughs> anyway, the song goes like this. She's a baby bear. She's a baby bear. Baby bear. <laughs> that's it. So yeah, that's all I'm asking you to do is sing or hum along to that song and uh, think about Ellie coming home and being healthy and happy and turning two in September. She turned out to be okay. They figured out what's wrong with her. Um, she has Addison's disease and it's treatable. It's just, uh, it's a different lifestyle and it took us some time to get used to it and all that. Yay, you go home? Yes, we got our baby bear back. Thank everybody for all the prayers and good energy. 
Yes. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. I love you. Yes. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so we're really, really glad that she made it. Of course, I'm really grateful for that. And it's just one of those things that I don't realize till after the fact that, wow, that affected me really bad. And it took me probably a couple of months to actually realize <laughs> that it took a huge toll on me emotionally and energetically, everything. And then um, it was just really too easy to reach for junk food to comfort myself. Because I don't really have any other vices. <laughs> so, yeah, junk food is a coping mechanism for me and it doesn't start off with me saying to myself, I want to get addicted again. I want to use junk food as my crutch. I want to feel like crap again. I want to gain weight. <laughs> it's never that kind of decision. Just like somebody who's addicted to drugs doesn't just decide they want to, you know, be addicted again. It's just a little addiction. Addictive brain that tells little lies to itself that you can probably just have one this time or I've been going through so much stress lately like why don't I just have some junk food <laughs> you're so cute you falling asleep um but yeah it's just it, it's just it's really easy to fall back into old patterns when you're faced with something really really challenging in life so um and for me it was just being on Amazon ordering her uh, some washable diapers and seeing a junk food suggestion Vegan, of course, always vegan, but I was eating like like full-on junk, like cookies and uh, vegan gummies and stuff like that, that, stuff that I hadn't eaten in ages. So, yeah, it was, it was really hard, wasn't it, Ellie, adjusting to her, uh, getting medication every 12 hours, and then um, adjusting to her having to go to the bathroom every one to two hours and wetting herself in her sleep and having sheets have pee on them and then our wash machine broke and we didn't have a wash machine for seven weeks this whole time it all happened at the same time i had hurt my back and i had frozen shoulder on the right side like i just had so much going on this is not a video for you to like feel sorry for me this is life life happens um, but sometimes we just don't deal with it as best as we'd like and that's the reality of it. So that's kind of a nutshell <laughs> um, And I think because I was eating junk food and I wasn't eating copious amounts of junk food but I'm really sensitive to processed foods and um, I feel like it plays a huge uh, It's really detrimental to my mental health and I just started getting into a deeper depression and it was if it wasn't for my dogs like you know my dogs keep me going even when days are bad they make me laugh every day even when I'm depressed so um yeah so that was why I hadn't uploaded between August and now um and now that I'm back on track with my eating I it's like night and day my mood my energy it's crazy it's just I'm feeling like myself again and it just feels amazing and this last six months it just honestly feels like I've come out of this icky, heavy, tight, black, messy cocoon or something, you know? From the dark to the light. Oh, you're so cute. I love you. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> I'm so lucky to have you. Yeah, I am. Mama's so lucky. <laughs> Okay, and before I go today, I wanted to read something to you that I feel like will resonate with a lot of you, whether it's to do with your weight or anything else that you've kind of lost a part of yourself in the last two years, because it's been a rough two years for everybody. We're all in this. Um, we're all affected to varying degrees, but it, it, it hasn't been easy for anybody. So um, I think we all need to learn to be a little more compassionate to ourselves. And I think uh, some people out there need to learn to be a little more compassionate towards others as well. And try to put yourself in their shoes and instead of jumping to conclusions or making judgments. I've had some messages from people. I'm sure they didn't intend to be mean, but they just kind of came off as rude. One person asked me 
or no, they didn't ask me, they stated that my diet's not working for me or else I wouldn't have gained weight. <laughs> but I didn't gain weight eating potatoes, fruit, and vegetables and I didn't think I needed to actually say that, but yeah, that doesn't happen for me. <laughs> um, eating a whole, whole foods, plant-based diet, low in fat, is what my body loves and I do so well on it. And as long as I stick to that, my weight either stays the same or I lose weight slowly. So if you've ever seen me gain any weight, see my weight go up and down a little bit over the last five, six years I've been on YouTube, it's not eating potatoes, rice, vegetables, fruit. It's not. Anytime I gain weight, it's directly because I've gone off track. <laughs> so, um, and that's easy to do when you're a junk food addict. It's so easy to do. So I just want people to keep that in mind. But no matter what, what it is, you know, if it's food, your weight, um, maybe you just lost your weight in some way in the last couple years and you feel bad about it. I don't want you to feel bad about it. So this is something that I respond to in a message in a DM. We had a really good conversation, by the way, so it's not like this person was completely mean or anything, but I want to read my response and I hope that you get something out of this. So it's important not to jump to conclusions when you see somebody gain weight. I personally am still very proud that I lost 100 pounds and kept it off for almost four years. Statistically speaking, that's a miracle. And I never gained all of it back, not even half of it. Here I am dusting myself off after falling flat on my face and charging full steam ahead to get back on track. To me, that's something to celebrate. So it's not, there's nothing wrong with getting off track, uh, failing at something, or getting it wrong, or losing your weight. There's nothing wrong with all of that. Um, getting yourself back up and having the courage to move forward is a testament to your commitment to yourself. And I want you to remember that. And if you're at the point right now where you feel like you can't get out of the hole you dug for yourself, just know that you will get yourself out of that hole one step at a time. And you're gonna feel amazing when you get out of it. So I'm here to reach down and help you get out of that hole if you need it. Because <laughs> uh, I know that ultimately you have to do it yourself. Nobody else can really push you, but um, I just wanna remind you to have the courage to, to do whatever it is that you need to do to move forward and just give yourself that gift. I know it's not easy. So with that, I will end today's video and let me know down in the comments below how the last couple years have treated you. Like let's, let's make it a little therapy session in the comments section. And everybody, please be kind and compassionate. Testing one, two, three. Six months, it's been a while. It's been six months, that's a while. Why does this feel so awkward? You're my potato people, cause we like potatoes. <laughs> Just pretend I'm talking to an old friend, okay? Hey, you.